So Richard, another season just ahead of us. Um, we had a great season last year. Plenty of horses for you that ran well are still in training and we've got plenty of new two-year-olds to, to talk about. Let's start with your older horses and probably the one we should start with is Mojo Star. Yeah, he had a great year last year. Second in the Derby, second in the Ledger. He's going to take, his, take it, or we're going to take our time getting him back this year. We were thinking of the Coronation uh, Cup at Epsom. Um, but, you know, he came back in very big. He came back a little bit sore from the arc. Um, so he had to take it easy with him. And we're trying to get him back for the Gold Cup. If that doesn't happen, there's still plenty of the season left. But um, we're going to try and get him back for Ascot. And would the other cup races after that be on the agenda? Yeah, the you know, the Gold Cup of Royal Ascot. So it's a very, very long race. Um, two miles might be his limit. You know, but he, he's equally effective over a mile and a half, mile and six. So we have a big, you know, distance range with him. And he's going to have a long season. It's just a question of when he starts. Chindit had another good season last year. It's good to see him in action. We saw him today looking good, looking sharp. He does. He looks great. And last year he was a, you know, he was a nearly horse all year. And he won his listed race very well. I think he will get a mile and a quarter, but we're going to go to the Lockinge. And uh, hopefully they'll go a good, fast gallop and we'll be up there handy and, and go close. It's a big upgrade from the listed race, but I think he's up to it. And Etonian going the same sort of route? Etonian, yeah, ran a very good race in the Spring Cup at Newbury. That was his first run for a very long time. He carried top weight. The handicap has dropped him two pounds. Um, but he will improve a stone from that run. Um, whether or not that's good enough for a lock inch to win it is doubtful, but Julie's very keen to have a go. We'll know where we stand, and that will depict where we go with him for the rest of the season. But at the moment, he's going to go to the lock inch, but I was very pleased with his first run back, and he would have needed that badly. Happy Romance was one of your stars from last season, back again. Yeah, she's, she's a star. She's going to go to the uh, Duke of York, and she looks nailed on to win a Group 1 this year on the form that she's been showing. She was very unlucky in Dubai not to be drawn closer to this rail. Other than that, I think she probably would have won. But her form shows that she's still on the upgrade at four and she's improved from last year. And she's going to be a big force to be reckoned with in sprint races this year. And Fancy Man, we've already seen him out this season. It was a little bit disappointing on the all-weather. Yeah, that's correct. Um, he just looked a bit one pace, And I think all he does is gallop. He does gallop very well, but primarily I think we're going to have to go up in trip. And the further we go, the more of a turn of foot he will have, which will help him. And, you know, the better he will be. So we'll go up in trip with him, but he's got to, yeah, prove that last race wrong. And we saw Surumi this morning striding out well. What are the plans for, for that one? I thought he was going to win there on Saturday at Musselburgh. He came up there like he was going to. And... Almost looked like he didn't stay, but Ross has said he did. So he could turn out to be an Ebor horse, but there are a lot of nice handicaps for him throughout the summer. Uh, he was in some this weekend. We're not going to go, and we'll, you know, there'll be plenty between here and Ascot along the way, hopefully. And uh, Typhoon Ten was another one that we saw this morning. Yeah, he had a great year last year. He's a little star. You know, he runs himself down to a handicap mark, and then he wins a few, and then up he goes till he's out, can't win off the mark. But he improved last year. He's a very good horse, a very fast horse, out of a mare called Cake. You know, he's not one that you can really tell when he's going to run a big race or when he's going to win. You kind of have to support him like a law fan all year and it comes your way sometimes and it's 20 to 1. And one horse I was interested to see out there was uh, Ventura Tormenta because we haven't seen, yeah. seen that one for a long time. So he won the, the uh, Robert Papin in France, which is a very good race. Group two over five and a half furlongs. Now, he came back from there very sore. And he kept, we keep getting the same injury recurring just when we start to turn the screw a little bit. But he's had his time off now from the last time. We're starting to turn the screw and he's going very well. He looks very big. You'll think he is, but he's a very strong horse with a lot of depth and makes him look bigger than he is. But he's, he's coming along well and he's lasting. What, what sort of races would you be aiming for for that? So he'll have to go sprinting, six furlongs, maybe even five. You know, there are loads of those, Goodwood, Ascot, wherever you want to go, and he's good enough. 
he's lost his penalty now, so he can go straight into conditions racing and hopefully start off winning. And uh, Aristia was uh, striding out well this morning. Yeah, she's moving better than she's ever moved probably. And she, yesterday, um, Will Edmeads came and she, she worked super. She's going to run a huge race at York um, at the May meeting. So one horse that our uh, followers love to hear about is Mum's Tipple. Yeah. It's been a talking horse for a long time. Ran some great races. Yeah. Um, ran well last season as well. Still in training. What yeah. would be the aim for, for Mum's Tipple this year? He looks great, but we have to wait for him to come right and then up for a race. There's no point getting races together and then trying to get him there because he, he finished last year a little bit sore. He'd done plenty and we had to give him his time. And... He's back now, he's working. As you can imagine, he works very well. Not a lot beats him. Um, where we go, I think he could run very well in a Wokingham, you know. He's a decent horse, he's coming down to that mark now where he could be very competitive. What was the key to him though? Because he, you know, he does run some exactly. very good races. Found it. Oh, we found it on occasions. But he can be up and down, but sprinters are like that. He's not the most straightforward horse. He hangs a little bit and he bolted up. Obviously, everyone's talking about that. Unbelievable performance at York. He was then the top rated two roll in Europe. But he didn't really go on from there. You know, he's won listed races and won, run, run very good races um, along the way, but he hasn't quite reached the heights of, of that time. But that was a funny race. And I think he broke the hearts of the horses in the race, and a lot of them probably just gave up. But he's a very good horse when he comes back. And, you know, he's got very high cruising speed. It, as I say, he's running down to a competitive handicap mark. He could show up in some nice handicaps at good prices. Another horse that we've spoken about at length in these sort of previews in the past, and you actually mentioned his name at Goodwood a few a few years ago, and he came good, was a Tahitian Prince. I, I noticed that one is a, is a horse to follow for this season. Yeah, he goes next Wednesday to Ascot for the Apprentice race. One mile, not to 95, form an orderly queue. He loves it there. You know, he might need his first run, like they all will, but you know, when they get to that age, especially now, they will need it. But it wouldn't stop him winning. He's, he's a very talented horse, and he, I think he won four races last year. You know, the year before, I couldn't see him getting beaten in any of them. He got beaten all of them. But the good horse was there. That was the main thing, and that's what we wanted to see. And he's an improving handicapper, is he, for this year, or is he better than that? Well, no, I think... He's getting up to a high mark now. He needs to be kind of a listed horse to win off the mark he's on now. Um, but we've got a very good apprentice in uh, Liam Brown. He's going to ride him and he'll go very well. You know, I would nearly say you could, you could back him. We picked this race up, or James Stafford did, a long time ago. And another horse that you've, you've mentioned that, you know, you thought he was going to be a, a very good horse and he maybe let you down a couple of times, but then came good, Dingle. Yeah, um, I thought he was very unlucky at Lingfield on Good Friday. Uh, if it was a little bit further, he probably he would have won. And he was drawn out wide, so that didn't help. He had to sit out the back and suffer. But he's, he's now run a very good race and put the second last race behind him. So I put him in a new market on Guinea's Day. He could have a great chance. And I just put him in the same race, funny enough, at Ascot as uh, Tahitian Prince. We don't want to get in his way there. So it'd probably go to new market. And uh, Reverend Hubert? He won very well. I always thought he was a horse that would get a trip. He's a very likeable um, horse that tries very hard, very strong, sound. And, you know, he's going to be a lot of fun. The horses that get that trip and are pretty decent, they take a long time to make. And the owners have, st have stood behind him and they're going to enjoy the season. They started off with a win. And their aim, obviously, is to run him at Royal Ascot, which, which would be great. He'll need to go up in the handicap to get in there probably, but he started off on the right foot, definitely. He, we're going to use him this year. He'll, he'll have a good few races. So, Richard, you've had such success with the classic generation over the last few years. Uh, plenty of your two-year-olds making into good three-year-olds, and, and this season looks like you've got a few more like that. Let's start at the top with LaSalle, who has already run this season, ran well. He ran a super race. Um, Dobbsy said afterwards he wished he'd, he'd let him roll. And we're going to run him in the Guineas. He said the ground um, was a little bit um, on the slow side for him at Newbury on Saturday, which is interesting. 
as I didn't think it would be, but he said it was. And on fast ground, he'll he'll run very well. And again, he's he'll hit the gate and go all the way. Hopefully, right back in the winners' enclosure. You never know. He's sixty-six to one. That was the last one. I won the Guineas with sixty-six to one. So hey, there's a tip in itself, Ed. And, and Gabas, is that is he going to go to the classics? No, he will go to the. King Edward II on the Friday of the, the Guineas meeting at Newmarket, seven furlong listed race. Yeah, he ran a super race. Um, I was pleased with him and he came home very well. Heredia is a filly that was unbeaten last year. And she kept, she was tying up last year and early this year she did it. And so that slowed us down a little bit. We were hoping to see if she was a Guineas filly. She's done her, her blood to now back right and she did a bit of work this morning, worked very well. She, she could be a very good filly. I think we'll start off somewhere. If we can get to the May meeting at York, is it the Seeley, Michael Seeley stakes, listed race, filly's only one mile. She could run very well in that, even though I got Snow Lantern beaten in it last year. How, how did that happen? And Mojo Star got beaten in a maiden the same day. And he's finished second in the derby. So the moral is back in the next time. Yeah, hopefully not. Hopefully they'll win this time. And a, a three-year-old that we noted, a lot of people at Unibet were, were tweeting about it, was, uh, was Bosch. He looked a bit unlucky. Well, he would have needed that big time at Newbury. He came there like he was going to win. He carried top weight and he'll win next time and he'll get seven furlongs. He's a horse, probably is to a horse to look out for. He's improved. Another horse that will probably be an improving three-year-old from your stable is, is River Pride. So she's going to run, I think, on the Sunday of the Guineas meeting. There's a filly's only seven furlong on that handicap, and uh, she'll go there. What, have you mapped out a plan for her? Because she, she looks a nice filly. She actually has done very well, but I think at this stage you go one race at a time. You know, you are your first race, and then you're more informed to look for her second race with regard to trip and track, etc. And uh, Symphony Perfect, another three-year-old to follow? She ran a good race, didn't she, at Newbury? Uh -huh. She goes to Chelmsford, six furlong, Philly's only listed race. It's like it was written for her. 100 grand. And you won, she you've won had it last race before, haven't you? Yeah. She won it last yeah. year, Happy Romance. Yeah. She's a good filly. She's improved a lot. And would she be six furlongs, seven furlongs? or? I think six. Let's get this one out of the way. And then I think she probably will get seven. She ran over seven on Saturday. But she was just a, you know, he, she was out there on her own and, she, she basically did the donkey work for them, but we won't do that next time. So Gisborne is, is coming back. Um, he had a little hiccup during the winter and he's had his rehab time and he's coming back nicely. Where he goes, I don't know yet. Um, we're going to get him back right and he'll be about a month from here. Witch Hunter ran with huge credit on the all weather. He came back from Lingers, which is why I think he might not have, he looked like he was going to win and he didn't. He came back with um, a little sprain in his joint, and so he has to have his time to get over that. <clears throat> and then he'll come back, and I think he'll get seven, no problem. Might even get a mile, but he's a very decent horse. He's not a maiden anymore, though. He won at 14 to 1 on or something. Stupid. Dawn of Liberation, I was very disappointed in his run at Newbury. Uh, sorry, Newmarket, and I still can't explain it. Um, I spoke to Paul and Mikey Roy, and we were all at a loss to, to think, you know, he, sh he looked great. He came into the race in good form. He'd had his run and he ran in the race. Like he really shouldn't have been there. He's way better than that. So we'll have to, you know, lick our wounds for a bit. And I, I think a Britannia might be a nice race for him. And it wouldn't surprise me if he ran very well. I think he's a very good horse, but, you know, I'm not going to defend him. He didn't look it last time, but don't judge him on that. You know, he's a, he's a very decent animal. There's Angel. He was unlucky not to win at Musselburgh last weekend. He wants a mile and a quarter, and he's improved, improved, improved. And uh, I think he could win a nice race, nice handicap over a mile and a quarter on a Saturday. They call them Saturday races now, don't they? <clears throat> Why don't you just say valuable? Eraz. So Eraz <clears throat> is probably my dark horse to look out for this year. I was really disappointed when he ran the Acom Stakes. You know, I thought he... I couldn't see him getting beaten, but I think he's a very good horse and I'm going to run him in the Pavilion Stakes this Wednesday. And I think he can run very well. He won his novice stakes there by three, four or five lengths or something. Jim Crowley's coming down to ride him tomorrow. 
I'd love to think he was a Commonwealth Cup horse. So Richard, as ever, you've got plenty of two-year-olds to talk about, over 100, I believe. Um, but I think I'm going to start with one that set an incredible speed rating in the first two-year-old race of the season, and the form's been working out well. That's Persian Force. Yeah, he's a good horse. And he'll go to the Olympic Boy Stakes at Newbury, and hopefully then on to the Coventry. I think everybody agrees he looked very good there, and I hope he is. He'd been showing a lot of speed, obviously, at home for you to enter yeah, in. Yeah, he's a but is, So six furlongs will be OK? Six furlongs will be fine. He's a gentleman. He relaxes. He's got everything. He, he hasn't done loads of work by any means. Um, and he knew exactly what to do. And he won very well. And he's a full brother to Gubbas, who you know very well. Yeah, full brother to Gubbas. And, you know, I just think everybody can't be wrong. I, everybody seems to, seems to know the horse. And that's when you can tell he's... You know, he touched a lot of people that day, and that doesn't normally happen in a Brocklesby. But we thought, what's, what's the point hanging on to him? He might as well get on with it. Well, I was going to say, you tend to have horses that run in the Coventry that have, if they win, they have one run. Yeah, so you're strong run, suit. Run in May, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, but but this there was one... no point hanging on to this guy. He was there, he looked right, he, he's doing everything right. Everything he did, he looked like he'd done it last year. You know, so we can send something else, hopefully, to Newbury. Well, he's going to go there anyway next week. Or no, Lockings Day. Called the Olympic Glory Stakes. And some other two-year-olds we saw on the gallops this morning, some beautiful-looking two-year-olds, I must say. We'll talk about two that we thought were going to be more later on in the season, but already already looking good later on. But uh, back in Ballymore was a beautiful-looking two-year-old. He is, he is. He was a pick of the paddock on a Sunday. And I spoke to his owner, and he worries me a bit, this horse, because he's a bit in and out. And I, I, I worried that he could do what he did do and not run very well. And, you know, he could probably run that race next week and he'll win four lengths. So he's done that at home. He's worked good. Then he's, then he's worked. I've gone, I kind of expected a bit more than that. A bit disappointed. And then he can work well again. And I was in two minds whether to run him. Anyway, I did. And that won't do him any harm. That, all that does is bring the day he's going to win, brings it forwards. You know, so it comes sooner. He would have learned a lot there, and he's way better than that. I suppose they can go one or two ways. They can go like Persian Force and just, it's natural. It's, yeah. Or they can go yeah. like back in Ballymore and be the yeah, stage fight. You know, Newbury's such a simple track, and it was only up the road. I thought it would do him good. You know, I'll, uh, I'll go with him. And he didn't do, he didn't do anything much wrong. He just didn't pick up like he, like he could. And uh, give him another chance. A filly who looked very good on debut's power dress. Yeah, lovely filly. Now, nah, she's big, she's strong. I didn't think she'd do that. The ground, she looked like she was going to finish a good second. She still nailed the second. And uh, for me, she was very impressive. She, the way she behaved, she came in the winners' enclosure afterwards. She was just looking for a bucket. You know, she didn't fuss her at all. And she's a real nice filly to look forward to. She'll probably be a six furlong filly as well for the Albany. So six furlongs at the Royal Ascot. Would she, would she run before? She might do. She might. I, you know, the listed races are all five furlongs. That doesn't necessarily put me off, but I, I think she's a filly that could go right through the year, so there really is no rush. And there's a couple of two-year-olds we saw by size that you would think maybe later on in the season they make the debut. So I'm interested in, in learning about these. So the one that looked really nice was Prince Maxi by See the Stars. Prince Maxi, he's a very nice horse. He's not a two-year-old that you will go looking for Ascot with. He's a back end of the season. He could be a derby horse, and he belongs to the same owner, and he's by the same stallion as Mojo Star. So two out of three things is pretty close, and he won't run to the thick end of the year, and he's a very, very nice car. And there's a filly there as well, belongs to the same owner. Um, I see the stars, and she's a really classy filly, probably will want a mile at the end of the year, but she's a 10 out of 10 for me. She hasn't run yet. And another two-year-old that we saw on the gallops was, was a, a cracksman uh, colt, uh, sorry, cracksman filly, Rich, who, again, looks quite Julie forward. Wood. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she, cracksman, you would think, maybe later oh, on in the season. That's exactly what I said when she came in, a cracksman. I didn't think I'd see loads of those. But she's a lovely filly. She moves very well. Dobsy rode her yesterday. She qualifies for the Chesham. Slow down. It's, I'm not saying that she's a Chesham filly or anything like that, but she's, she's a bloody nice filly. 
But you are, you are thinking of running at Royal Ascot, are you, for that already? Um, no, but is she qualified for that race? And kind of you notice those ones. She, you know, she's got a long way to go before she's looking at that sort of race, but it wouldn't surprise me if she ended up there at all. So we saw some other two-year-olds on the gallops today. Um, what can you tell us about the parent? Yeah, he, you, you won't think he's very quick when he comes past the camera, but he's very laid back and he'll take his time. He's not an early type, but a nice big horse. And a make-believe... There's a make-believe... Cole, yeah, by play actor, called play actor? play actor, yeah, belongs to Michael Prescott. He's a very nice horse. He did a lovely piece of work four or five days ago. He could be a horse starting off fairly soon um, <clears throat> if he continues in the, in the way he's going. You've got a Harry Angel, um, two-year-old, called Uncle. Yes, Uncle is, belongs to Martin Hughes, but he's a backward but very nice horse. Big, strong lad and uh, not showing much at the moment, but he doesn't need to. When we need him, when the seven furlong races start, we'll, we'll have him. And we saw a couple of uh, Kodiak fillies on the gallops this morning. Let's start with uh, Le Mans or Le Mans. Le Mans. She could be anything. A little jet ski. Really, really nice filly. Very classy. She's a half-sister to Le Sale who won the gym crack and the July stakes. I hope she's good. If she's not, the rest of them aren't. <laughs> There's another Kodiak filly there as well. Yeah, Magical Sunset. Magical Sunset, yeah. She came from Goffs. She was an expensive filly. Um, she looks a very nice filly. She probably wants six there, but I think she could be pretty good. My horse to follow for the year, I'll give you three to strike off now. Eraz, spelled E-H-R-A-Z. He's a very, very nice horse of uh, Shadwell's. Um, Le Mans, the Kodiak filly. And Persian Force, <laughs> if you didn't know already. That's it.